Hello Germany. This is Benny from ABBA. You are listening to VDA Fear. You were, I read, you were very influenced by your grandfather as well, were you? Well, he played the accordion. With you. And I was given an accordion when I was six years old. My father also played the accordion. So I joined, I, I, I think I learned pretty quickly, you know. So I think from the beginning I felt that this, maybe this is for me. You know. Did you have a children's one? Because yeah, otherwise a little, no, just arm. a little one. Little, I still have it. It's in the ABBA Museum. Oh, uh, you gave it yeah, to them. It's a Hugo Rauner, German, I think. Could be Swiss. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Well, anyway, but then I had a piano when I was 10. Uh, and uh, I haven't left the piano since then. I play piano every day. Have done since. I work in my studio on the other side here. I go there every day, try to write music, just to see if anything comes out. Normally it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't? No, it's, 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 a, it's a long process. But the thing is, if I'm not doing it, nothing is gonna happen. So I know I need to sit there and try to find something that speaks to me. And when it does, occasionally, I keep that. Could be only four bars, eight bars of something that I like myself, hearing myself playing, and I keep that, and that could take forever. Could also go in a second if you spent uh, six weeks without nothing happening. So it's it's a matter of being, uh, uh, what's the word? Patient with yourself? Patient. Are you good at that, being patient? I'm patient, that's the only way, when it comes to, to trying to create music. How how do you notice that you've it's ready or it's a good piece it's a good bit? I don't know. It's just that I trust my senses. I trust what I feel and what I hear. Uh, has always been like that mm -hmm. for you know for fifty years. So I've learned to trust it, and it seems to work. And do yeah. you remember who first believed in you? My mother, I'm sure. She, I think she she thought that I was a great little boy, you know. And I still, I still live from that. Did she ever tell you? I believe in you. And no, not not like that. She just showed, by way of, like how she was handling me, with other people. She would say, you know, he can read, and I was four. <laughs> And, and the neighbor said, no, he can't read. And she was said, show them. So I took out the Bible and started reading from the Bible because it was <laughs> the thickest book. So she was like that. She, yeah, she believed I could do things. When was the last time you really felt nervous? No, I, I'm not sure really nervous. I used to be nervous in situations like this for a long, long time. I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, it, that has gone now. But it's like I have my band, the Benny Anderson Orchestra. Mm -hmm. We go out on the road every second summer. Mm -hmm. We bring a dance floor. Uh, we play for four and a half hours. People are dancing. They're like maybe 5,000 coming every, every gig. And going out there, you know, saying hello, welcome, is always a little tense. But it's not, I'm not nervous, just sort of tense. So how will it go tonight, you know? Will they enjoy it or won't they? Can you walk a street in, in Sweden and nobody recognizes you? Or what happens when you walk down the road? Nothing. Nothing happens. Think, people recognize me. I know they do. They recognize me for, I don't know, 50 years. Uh, I never, it never bothered me. And the Swedes are qu quite laid back. They don't come running up to you, really. Now, after, after we... we uh, we announced that we are making a new album. So many people come up to me and tell me how happy they are about the fact that we are actually doing this after 40 years. And they're so nice, and they're so kind, and they're so happy, and that's, mm, it's, it feels good. What was the, the, the most touching story you heard about one of your songs, or what you meant to other people? Well, it's it's an, it's more an overall thing. It's it's this. Uh, 
sort of almost incomprehensible fact that we're still on. Even before we made this album, we were all around. People are playing our music all over the world all the time. Uh, I don't know why. You really I th- don't? No, no, I don't. I wish I knew. I think we were partly because it's good. You know, it's, many songs are good enough to be repeatedly played. But that goes for a lot of other artists and bands too. I mean, you have Fleetwood Mac or Eagles or you name them. But they're not as as uh, much played, I think, as ABBA. I don't know why it is. It has to do with the ladies, the voices, the good recordings and, and the, yeah, good enough, good enough work. I also think one of the reasons of your success, of course, that the whole thing is just like it's sort of perfect. It's like a round circle. But I also think your lyrics um, were so private and so um, so true that everybody could refer to fighting in your marriage or wanting, you know? Yeah, some of them, yes. If you ask Bjorn, who's the lyricist, he'd say that it's all fiction. Ah, yeah. But on the other hand, like with this album, 40 years, you know, of Water Under the Bridge means something for all of us. So, of course, he, one absorbs things that we didn't have 40 years ago. It reflects a little in the music. I'd say, I still have faith in you. I couldn't have written 40 years ago, but I can now. Because I've been in theater music for, for many years. I've been trying to develop my ears. I listen mainly, or I'd say almost only, to classical music. Uh, well, that has an effect, I think. And when it comes to the, the words, Bjorn, same for him. I mean, he's, he has another 40 years on his back and more experiences. And uh, I think there are not many pop songs around that is about uh, uh, split custody of a child or about an alcoholic woman or things like that. Those are not necessarily lived experiences. It's fiction, but would have a resemblance to I guess what he's been living with for 40 years? I don't know. You must ask him about that. <laughs> I only have done the music. Your album will be called Voyage and you've been traveling around the world so many times. What's the, what do you remember losing which really was, um, you wish you hadn't lost because you must have been traveling out of your suitcases years? Yeah, but the thing is we did not make any long-lasting tours because we felt, Bjorn and I felt, we, what we need to do is spend, as I told you, it takes a long time to write a good song. We needed time to do that. And if we would have been on the road, there would have been no time to do that. And we felt that's the, that's the base of it all. The song comes first and then you can dress it with anything you like, but you need the song, you know. A steady thing to, to, to as a base for what you're going to work with. So we didn't tour much. We did a lot of promotion. We went to all the German cities, we went to France, we went to Italy, we went to Spain, we went to England, everywhere to do promotion for the for the singles we released or albums. But then in, I don't know, uh, Lasse Hallström, director, made three videos of SOS, Mamma Mia, I do, I do, I do. And we sent them out instead of us going away. <laughs> so it made it a little easier. But uh, people still wanted us to come, you know, to be in the country where we were promoting what our work. So we still did that, but uh, not to the same extent. It's so amazing that you're still in good terms after such a long time. You, you spend Well, it's because of the long time, I think, don't you? I mean, we, we had a fantastic thing together for 10 years, or more than that, because we were together before we formed ABBA. That just happened to be. Uh, and having shared those experiences, being, you know, among the number one bands in the world for, for many years, that means something for everyone, individually too. That's probably why it was fairly easy to say, oh, 
Hey guys, you know we're going to do this show. We all knew that. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a couple of new tunes in that show? And they said yes. So they came here and we recorded I Still Have Faith in You and um, Don't Shut Me Down. End of 2017, beginning of 18. And we, we work with those and we mix them, we put them in the can. Because we say, let's wait, we're releasing them until we know when we can start selling tickets for the show for the one thing to help the other. And then it took longer than we thought. It had to do with pandemic, uh, Brexit stuff, I don't know. Um, and having those two songs, and we were all four very happy about those. We thought, wow, we, we're still good, you know? <laughs> it still sounds like we did then. So we said, maybe we should do a few others and see what happens. And then finally we ended up with a full CD. Uh, and the reason why that works so smoothly is that we have this, we share this together with ABBA. Everyone's been living their own lives in one way or another, but that's ours, you know. Were you tempted to put on more songs than those 10? Uh, no, we had actually 12. What happened to the other two? Oh, they're resting. <laughs> in the can? <laughs> uh, yeah, they not. They we never really finished them. I don't know. We we played it all and we said mm, we should we shouldn't that shouldn't be in now and not that one. They're sort of it's sort of good stuff, but not really finished. It takes more work for me at least in the studio. So there will be another album after this. No, album? no, there will never be another album. I can promise you that. Like you said, after the split, we're never going to reunite. I didn't say that. You I never, I never said that we're never going to be together again. But I can now. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. I mean, this is it. Jesus Christ, we're seventy-five. You know, and there's no point in it. I mean, this. We. Uh, I have to tell you, that we're not doing this to prove anything. 